Hey guys, today we're gonna to show you three editing tips to improve your photos in Lightroom. So grab your coffee, a computer, and let's get started. Bad lighting, aggressive tans, and even some presets can make skin tones appear muddy, orange, or worse. You can fix these with the HSL sliders in Lightroom. These control the hue, saturation, and luminance of your photo. Let's head into the develop module to see this in action. Let's give this a shot. That's just not gonna work. We've applied a preset called LXCN. Unfortunately, our skin tones now look a bit off. The good news is we can fix this. Before we get to work, make sure all is selected in your color section. You can adjust the colors by individually dragging the sliders, but we personally like to do it by using the target adjustment circle, which is this circle next to hue. Let's click it, go over to the part of the photo with tones that need our help and click and drag. Dragging up will adjust all the sliders involved with that section of tonage to the right, and dragging down will adjust all related colors to the left. If the skin is too red, drag your mouse up. If it's too yellow, drag it down. This looks like the correct hue for her skin. Next, you'll want to jump down to luminance. Click the correlating circle before clicking the skin, then boost it by dragging your mouse up a little bit. If you do it too much, they'll look more ghost-like than human, so use it in moderation. Finally, we'll go up to saturation, Click the circle and skin and drag your mouse down until your tones are on fleek queen. Another way you can use the sliders is to change the overall feel of your image. Here I have a shot I took last night with the preset applied. It's not quite the look I wanted, so I'll adjust the HSL sliders to achieve the right look. First, I'll change the hue of the background. Once I get it to where I want it, I'll raise the luminance. If we compare it to how it was before, you can really see the power of these sliders. Have you ever noticed a magenta or green outline around tree branches, your subject's face, etc.? It's called longitudinal chromatic aberration, and it occurs when different wavelengths focus at different points along the horizontal optical axis or something super sciencey like that. The good news is Lightroom is here to help. To fix this type of aberration, you can head into the manual tab and turn the diffringe amount to around five. You can either use the dropper or slider to get rid of the fringe, but I prefer using the sliders. With the sliders, you'll want to select the color range that your fringe falls in. In this photo, we have both bright pink and deeper purple colors to remove, so I'm going to manually select the range until the fringe is gone. This will desaturate your fringe so it blends into your photo better. Selecting too wide of a range may desaturate areas of your photo that are not victim of chromatic aberrations, so keep an eye out for that. Boom, roasted. The last tip is quick, but crucial. Most lenses add a level of vignetting that can detract from your photo. To quickly combat this, switch to profile in the lens correction section. Check enable profile corrections, and your lens should automatically be selected. Right below lens corrections is a transform tab. This will help fix any perspective issues that you may not want. Check the Constrained Crop checkbox, and then click the Auto button to automatically level your photo and correct the perspective. Note that this doesn't always produce desirable results, so just use it when you feel like it improves your photo. If the perspective correction isn't working out for you, we do recommend at least straightening your photos if they're supposed to be level. Either click the Auto button up top or do it manually. Bonus tip! If you want to lift some of the shadows around your subject's eyes, we can do this with an adjustment brush. Let's start by raising the highlights to something like 30. We will also lift the shadows just a touch. Ensure that your brush is large enough to cover the entire eye region and that your feather and flow are close to 100. Paint with a brush over each eye. You can hit the O key to see exactly what you're painting. If you need to erase any part of your brush strokes, hold down the Option key and paint over the area you wish to remove. Then, we'll raise the exposure to something around 0.2. If we compare it to the edit without the shadows lifted, you can see this really helps to bring out her eyes a little more. Second bonus tip. You may have noticed the masking slider in the sharpening section. Increasing the slider value will limit the areas of what gets sharpened to the most in-focus regions. If you hold down the Option key or Alt key, the white lines will show you what exactly will get sharpened. I personally like sharpening the more in-focus features, but do whichever you prefer. 